It wasn't a very big demonstration, but some of these anti-Gaddafi students had come from as far as Manchester, their faces hidden to avoid identification by observers inside the bureau. Gaddafi is a terrorist! Down, down with Gaddafi! Down, down with Gaddafi! Down, down with Gaddafi! Down, down with Gaddafi! Carefully watched by the police, they left their coach and started parading in front of the bureau. For the police, it was just another routine assignment, nothing to worry about, just another demo. WPC Fletcher was in the middle of the square as part of the thin cordon to stop the demonstrators getting too close to the bureau. On the other side, underneath the bureau, a small group of pro-Gaddafi students started chanting in opposition, but they stayed well back. And then the shooting. WPC Fletcher was carried by her colleagues from where she fell to a spot out of sight of the bureau. Her fiancé, a police constable, had also been on duty in the square and was with her as she was being given first aid before the ambulances arrived. Seriously wounded and probably unconscious, WPC Fletcher was carried into an ambulance and rushed to Westminster Hospital. The other, less seriously wounded, were given immediate first aid on the pavement. Apart from Yvonne Fletcher, all the injured were Libyans taking part in the anti-Gaddafi demonstration. They too were taken quickly by ambulance. At Westminster Hospital, policemen waited anxiously to hear news of their colleague, but early this afternoon a statement was made about her. She was brought to the hospital just before 11 o'clock today. She was taken to theatre, and after about an hour undergoing surgery, she died at about midday. She died of serious gunshot wounds to the abdomen. By now, more armed police had been rushed in and quickly took up positions around the bureau. Overhead, the police helicopter checked movements on the ground and helped to coordinate the police operation. On the ground, police from the anti-terrorist squad, special branch, and the 11th branch prepared for the possibility of more shooting. Now it was beginning to look like a siege with police marksmen at every vantage point. The operation was controlled by senior police officers from a mobile headquarters parked just round the corner from the bureau. Then a man was allowed out of the bureau. Later he was identified as a Libyan television correspondent. He walked silently towards the police. Then he was thoroughly searched before being taken away to answer more questions. By now the police had decided to evacuate the whole area and to get the thousands of office workers near the bureau out as quickly as possible. It was felt that if it came to more shooting, anyone within range of the building could be at risk. And for some, this meant an undignified and awkward departure over rooftops and down fire escapes. The police were on hand to see everyone over the obstacle course and down to safety. For others, it was an easier route, straight into the street and then behind the police cordon. It was a massive operation in itself, but was completed calmly and thoroughly in under an hour. With civilians out of the way, police marksmen could move into the deserted area and start taking up more permanent positions. From behind the cover of doorways, policemen aimed rifles at the bureau and waited. In the square itself, officers with pistols took advantage of trees to give cover, always making sure the building was in their sights. Rooftops, too, gave vantage points into the square. These men are experts at finding the right positions to give themselves maximum protection, whilst at the same time keeping continual surveillance. 
men from the Special Air Service Regiment are now believed to be in London, but it's not known if they've been moved into the St. James area yet. To complete the ceiling off of the square, scaffolding was moved in to enable screens and tarpaulins to be erected. The police are now in telephone contact with the Bureau, but it's essential that nothing sudden happens to escalate the situation into more violence. To that end, the public were being kept out of the way and out of sight. Only vital personnel are being let inside the cordon. Above, the police helicopter circled continually and low with sophisticated monitoring equipment and cameras inside and mounted on the fuselage. The police have now settled in for what could be a long wait while their senior officers and the politicians decide what steps to take next. Jeremy Hands, News at 10, St. James's Square, London.